What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be starting off the RxJS course. And RxJS definitely has a bit of a reputation as difficult to learn, but don't worry because I'm gonna take you guys from the most simple example possible and take you to the point where you can succeed as a professional developer and not learn any extra crap or garbage that you don't need. And let's just start off with the, I call them like the interview questions. Like these are the types of questions that people are going to ask you in an Angular interview. Like why do we use RxJS? And what is the difference between imperative and declarative? And what is callback hell? Because you're gonna experience callback hell one day and you need to know what that is. Okay. so. Really, the reason that we use RxJS is because it's how we handle asynchronous code in a way that doesn't put us in callback hell. That's like what we want. That's like what we are trying to avoid with these frameworks like RxJS, like streams in Java, like link in um, C Sharp. We have them because if you try to do this without a framework with RxJS, you're going, like say for instance, you need to reverse a string, you're gonna have to write your own function um, and you're going to have to think about the code imperatively versus declaratively. And what the hell is imperative versus declarative, Teddy? Guess what, because I'm about to tell you, it's really important to know this and it's not really even that complicated. So think of a really simple example you are going to wake, let's describe your daily routine imperatively versus declaratively. An imperative daily routine would look like, I opened my eyes, I got out of bed, I hit the alarm button on my iPhone to turn off my alarm, I made coffee, I went to work. That's an imperative way. A declarative way would be, I took care of my day. It's just one line and it does a lot for you. RxJS is going to be the declarative way that we handle a lot of our data. And with RxJS, Streams, Link, and all of these reactive frameworks, you essentially become like a hibachi sushi chef where you are just, you know, you're chopping up data and you're doing so in ways that are very precise and, you know, of professional quality work okay so not really that's complicated and just to kind of describe to you how i'm going to set up this environment what i'm going to do is i'm going to do it the just regular javascript way i don't think it's really important to get so wrapped up in typescript but if you want to use typescript go to my github and i've got a typescript playground for you just download it and install npm just type in npm install rxjs and you should be good to go but in the next video i'm actually just going to install just make my own folder structure and install from there just letting you know beforehand beforehand <clears throat> excuse me in case you get lost or you're wondering. So let's just continue on with RxJS and let's continue to deep dive so that you have a really good theory and you have a really good understanding of how a lot of this stuff works underneath the hood so that as we progress, you're not going to be lost and you don't even like understand the concept of what RxJS actually even is. So in RxJS, we have this funny little word called streams. And streams are going to be representational of how data comes to us in RxJS. And we're going to compare it against a boring static array. Array is static. It is boring. It is not cool like us streams people. So if you think of an array, it's just like I said, it's static. It's not moving towards you. It's not doing anything. But if you think of a stream... Like a stream, there's movement coming. Like a stream like can come at you. So let's do this and let's compare it to observables versus an observer. And this is an important concept to kind of understand that there's an observable and then there's an observer. Very, very important to understand. And what's gonna happen is that the observable is going to 
emit data at us like a stream. It's going to be very stream like. If we just have an array, like there's no push or pull in just a regular array. A stream push and pull. That's another really important thing to kind of understand in um, Angular RxJS architecture. It's push versus pull architecture. The component is going to go out, it's going to send a request and the data essentially is going to flow towards us like a stream. And the observable part and the observer is going to be what allows this to happen. And Another and really important thing to really realize is that you can wrap anything in an observable. An observable is literally just a class that you can, you can turn any code that you want to in an observable. It's literally just a nice little wrapper framework that we have that can wrap any piece of code into this. So you could technically, this doesn't even make sense. Like this doesn't make sense, but this is sort of the idea you put you know, your code inside of an observable so that you can send it down to the person that you're, or the components that you're trying to get it to. So another one, another analogy that I never see people use is the YouTube subscriber. The YouTube subscriber to um, YouTuber relationship. Like I am a YouTuber. You don't sit around and wait at my channel for my content because you need to be programming. So what you do is you hit the subscribe button. Or subscribe button. You are the observer. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the subscribe button and I am the observable. And at the appropriate time, I'm going to send my data down to you very similar to a river and you hit the, essentially the way that the observer or the person who's a subscriber gets my data and this is actually real you subscribe you hit the subscribe button you you know you subscribe to my channel and we actually use that term in rxjs we're using that term but we can't just stop there because let's just talk about and i'm i'm not being like you know, preachy or whatever, but this is so important to understanding obser how observables work that it, if you don't understand this, like this might, like the whole entire course might be totally screwed up for you. So I'm sorry if you, you know, I, if people ask me like, what's the next thing? My blood's going to boil. I'm sorry. All right. So next complete error. 90% of what the code that you are going to be programming and what's going to be doing 90% of the work is this little next thing. And just think of the next as you're sending something down the stream. You are essentially moving the stream. You are pushing the data down the stream. Whenever you complete, essentially what's going to happen is, so complete, essentially what's going to happen is that you're going to cut off the stream. The stream is not, but this isn't the same thing as unsubscribe. We'll talk about unsubscribe. Complete and unsubscribe are totally different. And then we have an error. An error basically means, I don't know what the fuck you just did, but shit's broke and this whole thing doesn't probably doesn't even work because you need errors for people to understand. Like if your error, if you, if your observable errors, wouldn't you want to know? So exactly. So that totally makes sense. It just underneath the hood, you need to understand these three things right here. And unsubscribe is essentially, it's going to destroy the stream. It's just going to say the stream no longer, this, this relationship no longer exists. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. And that is like the whole entire whole, you know, idea behind unsubscribe. And in the next video, we're going to be putting, putting all of these to use because we're going to be building our own observable. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.